Good morning, church. Good morning. And welcome to Bethel Thedford. I'm Pastor Linda, and I am delighted to see you people here today. It is wonderful, and I'm very pleased that you people are online as well. We're going to start off singing, This is the Day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and who can finish it? Don't everybody speak at once. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Lord, in all that we do. Let it be your words that we speak, words of kindness, words of love. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord, so that we can see where you want us to be and what you want us to do. Direct everything that we do, Lord. Above all, today we want you to be here with us. You tell us where two or three are gathered in your name, that you're here in the midst, and we want you here. We welcome you here, and we want your words to be heard in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to sing the solid rock. Thank you. 
Jesus loves even me. Isn't that wonderful? Even with the trouble I'm having playing here, he still loves me. Okay, restricted access nations. That's what um, we start off with. Luke 10, verse 2. These were his instructions to them. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. Now this week we're doing Maldives. And you can see where they're located there. Oh, that one says India. Oh, no. There it is, down in the bottom. You see a tiny, tiny little place there. Yeah, it's down below India. It's not very big, not very big. Now in 2022, it was rated as number 16 out of the 50 of the uh, most dangerous places to be a Christian. 2023, it's gone up one. So now it's uh, at number 15. Persecution levels is very high, and the type is Islamic oppression, dictatorial paranoia, organized corruption and crime, and then the population of the Christians, they don't have a count. 
They don't have a count. It just says a few hundred. And that's an estimate by um, the Open Doors organization. And it was a few hundred last year as well. Now the main religion there is Islam. Government is Presidential Republic and the leader is President Ibrahim Mohammed Sola. The persecution is the government, uh, the government of the Maldives likes to boast that the country is 100% Sunni Muslim. So any deviation is taken seriously. No religious minorities are recognized by the state and every citizen is considered to be Muslim. So Christian converts have to follow Jesus in the greatest of secrecy. If discovered, they're very likely to be reported to Muslim leaders or the authorities and can be stripped of the citizenship and even given the death penalty. Even foreign Christians working in the island's tourist sector are closely watched by the authorities. They can only meet up with worship or for worship or weddings in a private place, such as their country's embassy, and must not express or discuss their faith with local citizens. If they do, they'll be fined, deported, even imprisoned for a number of years. There are elements of violent Islamic extremists in the Maldives, including fighters returning from places like Syria, who pose a danger to suspected Christian believers. And the country is struggling to cope with the size of this challenge. The Maldives is made up of very close-knit communities, making it very difficult to talk to or meet up with anyone secretly. Christian faith must be kept so private that two members of the same family could be believers without knowing it. Mutual encouragement and fellowship is a huge challenge for many Christians and for members of other religious minorities. They will attempt to leave and start a new life. The most vulnerable, the converts to Christianity from a Muslim back background face the most severe persecution in the Maldives as officially they do not exist in the country. Anyone leaving Islam will lose their citizenship. There's no comments from um, uh, the imprisoned believers or the ones that are in hiding. So the changes for this year, the situation for Christians in the Maldives did not change significantly, and the Maldives continue to be seen as 100% Sunni Muslim, Due to the reopening of the islands for tourism, more migrant workers are returning as there are tourists and as are the tourists the country's economy depends on, which means there are more Christians from other countries in the Maldives. Second Corinthians four, verses nine and ten. This is how they describe the Christians. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down but we are not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. Now we know that Jesus never said that being a Christian was going to be easy. It wasn't going to be a bed of roses, so to speak. Actually, he said the opposite. You know the thorns that come in the roses? That's probably what we'd be laying on is the thorns because it can be very difficult. Prayer points. They ask that we pray for religious freedom to come to the Maldives. Pray that believers find ways to safely communicate and access Bible materials. Pray for Christians feeling isolated that will know God's presence and love. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that the leaders of the Maldives will soon allow freedom of religion and recognize that faith cannot be forced. We pray that you'll make ways for secret believers to safely communicate with one another and have access to Bible materials to deepen their knowledge and faith in you. Do miracles in whole families so that husbands, wives, and children can joyfully follow you together. Lord, we know that if the leaders of a country turn to you, then the country will also turn to you. We pray that you do that, Lord. Nobody else can do it. Only you can do it. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, our message today, strangely enough, is going to be on business meetings. Um, because we're having the business meeting after our uh, service. Now, as you know, the book of Acts records the history of the church. And it starts right at the very beginning. And that's where we find that they had business meetings back in the day. 
Now the purpose of the meeting is to go over the past year's activities and events and discuss and look forward to the current year's activities and events. And this is to allow everyone, members and adherents, to have a say in what's happening and that we're all on the same page. It's not a new concept. It's something that's happened since the church began. Christ is the basis for this church and it's on Christ, the solid rock, we stand. If we don't stand on Christ, we're going to sink. We're going to sink. Now the apostles and fellow believers were full of joy. They were in the upper room praying and interceding for others and they were united in their belief in the Lord. They also studied the scriptures and they didn't have a book available to them or phones that could access uh, the different uh, versions of the Bible or computers. They knew it. They knew it. They studied the scriptures and they knew they needed to fill the vacancy that was made when Judas had uh, left them and then of course committed suicide. Psalm 109.8, 8b, it's the second part of it, says, let another take his office. The apostles knew and understood the word as Jesus opened their minds and gave them understanding. Acts 1, 15 to 17. During this time when about 120 believers were together in one place, Peter stood up and addressed them. Brothers, he said, the scriptures had to be fulfilled concerning Judas, who guided those who arrested Jesus. This was predicted long ago by the Holy Spirit speaking through King David. Judas was one of us and shared in the ministry with us. We carry on verses 18 and ni to 19. Judas had bought a field with the money he received, he received for his treachery. Falling head first there, his body split open, spilling out all his intestines. The news of his death spread to all the people of Jerusalem and they gave the place the Aramaic name Achildama, which means field of blood. Verses 20 to 21. Peter continued, This was written in the book of Psalms, where it says, Let his home become desolate, with no one living in it. It also says, Let someone else take his position. Now those scriptures are found in Psalm 69.25 and uh, Psalm 109.8, which is what we started with. Verse 21. So now we must choose a replacement for Judas from among the men who were with us the entire time, the entire time that we were traveling with the Lord Jesus. From the time he was baptized by John until the day he was taken from us, whoever is chosen will join us as a witness of Jesus' resurrection. Verses 23 to 26. So they nominated two men, Joseph, called Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they all prayed, O oh Lord, you know every heart. Show us which of these men you have chosen as an apostle to replace Judas in this ministry, for he has deserted us and gone where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and Matthias was selected to become an apostle with the other eleven. Now the practice of casting lots, we talked about that last week. Remember with the, uh, the book of Esther? the Feast of Purim, and Purim is the casting of lots, and that's what they did then too, <clears throat> and that was many years later. Now, casting of lots isn't like flipping a coin, because when they flip a coin to see who's going to be uh, first up for the baseball, for example, which team is going to go out first, they'll flip a coin. It's not the same thing. At one time, when they were casting lots, it could have been sticks, could have been flat stones, it could have been coins, whatever the case may be. But they gave it to God first. They trusted that the chosen would be God's choice. But it slowly got away from that. It got to be, some people use it for lotteries and everything else, and that's not what it's all about. It was about being in God's will and doing what God wanted. And as we see there in verse 26, Matthias was selected to become an apostle with the other 12, so the numbers had come back to 12. They were united. They joyfully met together. They prayed. They trusted. They had faith in God. 
And God answered. We're going to move on to Acts 6, where we see another business meeting taking place because there was a rift in their community. And it was regarding the widows and how they were taken care of. So Acts 6, verses 1 to 7. But as the believers rapidly multiplied, there were rumblings of discontent. The Greek-speaking believers complained about the Hebrew-speaking believers, saying that their widows were being discriminated against in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve called a meeting of all the believers and said, We apostles should spend our time teaching the word of God, not running a food program. And so brothers, select seven men who are well respected and are full of spirit and wisdom. We will give them this responsibility. Then we apostles can spend our time in prayer and teaching the word. Everyone liked this idea, so they chose the following. Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, Philip, Pragoras, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenos, and Nicholas of Antioch, an earlier convert to the Jewish faith. These seven were presented to the apostles who prayed for them as they laid their hands on them. So God's message continued to spread. The number of believers greatly increased in Jerusalem and many of the Jewish priests were converted too. Now when we check back through the Old Testament, we see that God has always been concerned about the widows and the orphans. Zechariah, or Zechariah chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Judge fairly and show mercy and kindness to one another. Do not oppress widows, orphans, foreigners, and the poor. Do not scheme against each other. Then we go to Malachi 3, verse 5. I will speak against those who cheat employees of the wages and oppress widows and orphans, or who deprive the foreigners living among you of justice. For these people do not fear me, says the Lord of Heaven's armies. The prophets also cried out for the protection of the widows and orphans, and we see that in Isaiah. Isaiah 1, verse 17, defend the cause of orphans, fight for the rights of widows. We look in the New Testament, James 1, 17, or 27. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. God hasn't stopped caring for widows and orphans. In a lot of cases, when they talk about widows, they're talking about seniors because it's said that with the younger widow that they're to remarry. But it's the older ones that don't have someone to look after them that the church is to look after. And so many times with orphans that churches have programs for the young, youth groups, uh, children's programs, and we used to have the children's program too until COVID came in. And it's amazing how, I swear it's the enemy that's uh, coming in and trying to close the churches down. And they succeeded for a short period of time. And then of course we got all the electronic stuff and learned how to do all of that too. But then that's good and it's bad at the same time because it's, uh, it's good, the message can get out, but it's bad because people feel comfortable sitting at home watching the message. But then the other good part is they can do it any time but then they're not in a big hurry to come back. But God wants the message to get out, so it's been used for the good. The apostles' response to the problem of not treating the uh, widows fairly was correct. They called a meeting. They called a business meeting. They had all the believers come together and says, now we've got to find a solution here, one that agrees with what God says. And they chose the people to take care of it. And so, these people, they were, um, the Greek word means deacons, and deacons means uh, table setters. So they're the food people, the ones that take care of the food. I didn't realize that until I searched that. It's amazing what you can learn. So the deacons were looking after the, uh, the widows, making sure they had food. Because they have to have food in order to live. And at that time, without having a man there that was going to be going out and working, they weren't getting it. Some of them were still allowed to do something, but in most cases, they're too old. They're, what are they going to do? They can, they can work, yes. I shouldn't say too old, I'm old. 
and I still work. <laughs> but we, you keep going, and where they can't uh, do something, then that's why people step in and they help. If you have neighbors that uh, have lost a husband, then you check on them. How's your mom doing, by the way? Good. I see pictures on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's good. That's nice. All right. The apostles, they're the leaders of the church. They asked the congregation to choose the people. They didn't choose the people because it's not up to the apostles or the church leaders or the pastors or whatever to choose the ones that are going to do the work within the church. It's up to the congregation. And they choose the deacons, the elders, the board members, whatever the case may be. They put the names forward, and then they vote on them. We do the same thing here for board members. So that's also something that has been carrying on since the church began back in the first century. With the church being united to resolve problems, then the church can continue to focus on the word of God. And allowing the people to be involved in the ministry to one another, which also helps the church to be involved and in preaching out the word of God by action because people see what you do and they feel what you do more than they hear what you say because your actions speak far louder than words. As the needs of, are met, churches can grow. Now as we see in this uh, message here, God wants us to minister to the widows and to the orphans Business meetings are important. You have to get together and you have to discuss things. Pastors should lead the congregations in positive directions. Congregations do the electing of the elders, the workers of the church, the board members, the deacons. The church commissions its workers in accordance to God's will. Whatever we do in the church has to be according to God's will. And he'll make it happen. Even with... Um, with us, with as small as we have been over the last couple of years, we got that washroom put in out there. Would have thought it was impossible. And then it's there. We got the door put in last week. Was it last week? Yes. Another thing we thought would be impossible. We have the materials for the, uh, the landing, the decking. We have the ramp already. So when the weather straightens out, that'll all be put in. It was thought to be impossible. Churches with more people in them have been closed. We're still open. God has a purpose for this church, and it is starting to come together, and you can feel it. I can feel it. You can feel it in your spirit. That's something, something. Yes, and that's why uh, you came back too. You can feel it. Something is going to happen, and it's going to burst. And we have to stay faithful. We have to stay faithful. When congregations work together and focus on God and on God's word, things start to happen. And when we pray together, things happen. Things happen. We're having a short message because we are having the uh, business meeting afterwards, and we're going to have a break for uh, a light lunch, um, which is all ready to come up. I did the sandwiches this morning. But we're, did you decide what kind of soup we're going to have on the 26th? Oh, it's a surprise to <laughs> It's a surprise to you, too. Okay, okay. And then after that, we're going to every two weeks. Do you know the one thing that it says in Scripture? As the church was growing, it was growing because people were meeting together in fellowship and sharing their meals together. And that's how we uh, grew before. Because we would have, that's right, people, people need to eat. They like to eat and not necessarily like to make it themselves. So, the, this way, <laughs> yes, so uh, that means that uh, every other week we'll be having, uh, having lunch. Right now, because it's winter time, we're having soup and sandwiches. And everybody's ready to, er, invited to join. Um, the next one is you. Uh, Sharon, are you guys doing the next one? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You've heard of that volunteering and volunteered? Told? Yeah, well, it's, um, it's one of the. I wasn't telling you you had to. Volunteering. Volunteering. Is that what it is? Okay, okay. Sharon makes good soup. Or was it Dean yes, that made that soup? She said some soup. We, both, we cook together. 
You cook together? A lot. Okay, that's good. But the, well, the one that you sent home to us that time was good. We awesome. really enjoyed that. We really enjoyed that. So, uh, see, if you weren't such a good cook, I wouldn't have asked you about it. <laughs> we like to eat. Yeah. What do you do? All right, we're going to sing a few more songs, starting off with Jesus, name above all names. Thank <laughs> you. 
Again, we pray that you keep your hand of protection on each and every one of us. Lord, for the people who are sick, 
for the people who are lonely, for the people who are depressed, for the people who just feel that they've lost all hope, we ask that you touch them with your loving grace. The people at the manor feel that they're, they're losing hope right now. They're locked down again. And they're feeling so, so lost because of it all. We pray that you just encircle them, Lord, with your protection. Let your Holy Spirit minister to them, Lord. I'm thankful, Lord, that I've been able to be in there to minister. And I pray for the time that I'll be able to go back in again. I'm out at least 10 days anyway, right now, unless more cases come in. We pray, Lord, that you be with them. Be with them all. Help them not to lose hope. And Lord, we ask that you be with us today as we have our business meeting. Let it be your direction that we hear, Lord. Let it be your direction that goes forward. Bless each and every one that's here today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God be with you. No, nope, that's not where it starts. Okay. Until we meet again. And God willing, that'll be next week.